Breath of the Wild. Nintendo's heaviest hitter on the dying Wii U, its strongest hope for the upcoming NX, and perhaps the most ambitious game in one of the most prestigious video game franchises of all time. The sheer scope of Breath of the Wild took gamers by storm this past E3, where a huge area known as the Great Plateau was fully explorable to those on the show floor. Despite what huge amounts of the game they appeared to show this E3, the Great Plateau, and therefore everything we saw at the event, makes up less than 2% of the complete game. And because of this relatively limited view into the new Zelda, this leaves a lot of mysteries unexplained. These mysteries are too big for one man alone to handle, so today I'm joined by HMK to propose a mechanic that would help the player uncover Hyrule's secrets in this game. The biggest mystery of Breath of the Wild is what exactly happened to Hyrule a century ago. In fact, Nintendo UK describes this as one of the major points in the game, quoting, Travel across fields, through forests, and to mountain peaks as you discover what has become of the ruined kingdom of Hyrule in this stunning open-air adventure. We know for sure that something huge went down a hundred years ago. Like, apocalyptic level huge. We learn from the old man that at this time the Calamity Ganon, a monstrous beast, appeared from nowhere and laid waste to the land, and was only prevented from laying the kingdom low entirely by the sacred Hyrule Castle, which contained him. We also learn from the mysterious voice that this was when Link first began his slumber, which infers that he was alive to experience the events preceding and during Hyrule's destruction at the hands of Calamity Ganon. This is supported by the voice who describes Link as the light, our light, that must shine upon Hyrule once again, suggesting that he fought for Hyrule at some point and in some way before his sleep. However, he appears to have forgotten everything before his sleep, including what happened to the world and who the voice belongs to. In addition to these two events, it's strongly inferred that the destruction of Hyrule occurred at this time, a century prior to Breath of the Wild. The Calamity Ganon is described as having brought ruin and corruption a hundred years ago, and also as destroying everything in its path, resulting in what we see of the kingdom in the game, such as the ruins of Hyrule Castle Town surrounding the Temple of Time, and the ominous wreckages of Guardians. This ruined kingdom links into the next mystery of Breath of the Wild. The lack of towns. Towns and villages were sorely missing from what we saw at E3, and the explanation that we got from series producer Eiji Aonuma is confusing to say the least. He is quoted as saying, I can't share too much about villages because to tell you how villages work, they're interconnected to the story and the overall world. In fact, the only thing resembling a working town we've seen in Breath of the Wild so far is the small farm village all the way back at E3 2014, but this doesn't look like a spoiler or appears to be interconnected to the story? So what could the reason be for all of this? We know that a hundred years ago, Link was alive, before the Calamity Ganon attacked, destroyed Hyrule, and Link began his slumber. Where are the towns, and how are they connected to the story? How will we discover the meaning behind these mysteries? It all points to one possibility, that Link will be able to jump back in time a hundred years, back to this chaotic era of the past, back to Calamity Ganon's rampage, and back to the events that destroyed the land. Sounds far-fetched? Well, there's a huge amount of evidence to back this up, and we'll take you through it. First off, every 3D Zelda so far has featured time travel as a large mechanic. The smallest example in which an entire dungeon is being in the past in Twilight Princess, and the entirety of Hyrule Castle being frozen in time beneath the sea in The Wind Waker. If Breath of the Wild did not feature time travel in some way, it would be an outlier among 3D Zelda titles. But that doesn't really provide any evidence, does it? So let's have a look. Take for example the fact that Link has been sleeping for a hundred years. What other Link do we know that had a long sleep, waking up into a ruined Hyrule, a land terrorized by Ganon? The Hero of Time. This Link in Ocarina of Time was sealed for seven years when he pulled out the Master Sword, waking into his destiny as the Hero of Time. After he awakens in the destroyed world, he is then able to travel back in time by placing the sword back into the pedestal to the point before the sword was ever pulled. And I theorize that time travel in Breath of the Wild will work this way. Link will be able to travel back and forth across his 100 year slumber. There's an interesting parallel between the waking of Link after this 100 year sleep in Breath of the Wild and Link after his 7 year sleep in Ocarina of Time. When Link wakes after 7 years in Ocarina, we hear the words, Link, wake up. Link, the chosen one. 
This is very similar to the words Link hears when he wakes up in Breath of the Wild. Open your eyes. Wake up, Link. Shortly followed by... Link, you are the light. Our light. That must shine upon Hyrule once again. It's also interesting that Link wakes up from a similar blue liquid to that which is found in the Chamber of Sages, immediately after Link wakes in Ocarina of Time. In addition, Aonuma has hinted in an interview at this connection between the two heroes' sleeps. He's quoted as having said he didn't want to say much about the story, but that he'd share a hint. He noted the t-shirt he was wearing showed the Sheikah symbol, and that it was the same one from Ocarina of Time. He then reminds that Link is told he's been asleep for a hundred years. Link having the ability to travel back a hundred years in time makes it clear to why Aonuma and the Zelda team are being so elusive about the game's towns. Towns weren't shown at E3 because they were central to the game's story, and therefore were excluded from the demo because they will spoil plot elements. Think about it. Everything we've seen so far of the world is ruins. The Temple of Time, Castle Town, as well as the remains of settlements elsewhere, are all in a state of extreme disrepair. It does seem odd that in a game as expansive as Breath of the Wild, Nintendo would skip the opportunity to include complete, busy settlements, especially considering that the main source of rupees in this game has been confirmed to be trading with NPCs. Could it be that classic Zelda towns are locked away in the past? If this is indeed the case, then this would explain why Aonuma describes the towns as connected with the story. In order to access the towns, Link must leave the ruined land by travelling back before its destruction. Still don't believe us? How about this? During the first Treehouse livestream of Breath of the Wild, the team commented on a ruin of a guardian in the Temple of Time, and then point out that we've seen them active, intact guardians at other points in the game. In response to this, Aonuma simply responds, There must be some sort of a time lapse. What could this mean except that the intact guardians we've seen are actually in the past, and after the hundred year gap, are found rusted, decayed and broken? Let's have a look. The first look at a guardian we got was during E3 2014, when it emerges in a field and chases Link down with its lasers. Notice how the castle in the distance is white and clean, with no sign of the Calamity Ganon surrounding it like other times we've seen the structure, suggesting that at this point, the Calamity Ganon had yet to attack. The world itself lends evidence to this idea. There are multiple settlements visible, this apparently fortified area, as well as a village on the right. This village has farmers, a lookout, and multiple buildings, all intact with no sign of desolation that is shown everywhere else in Hyrule. There are also no resurrection towers visible, which we know in the future are dotted all over the world after Link activates the one at the Great Plateau. From this, it's possible to speculate that the E3 2014 trailer took place a hundred years before the E3 2016 demos, before the Calamity Ganon attacked, before Link began his sleep, and before Hyrule was destroyed. This could explain an odd moment in an unreleased E3 trailer for the game, shown only to attendees at the show floor event. In this trailer, a ruined guardian in the Eastern Abbey activates before it flashes to white and then to the E3 2014 scene of Link battling a guardian. It's possible to interpret this as a flashback of sorts. Maybe this guardian is the very same one Link battled in the past. We glossed on it before, but we know that Link has seen the world a hundred years ago, and was alive during an extremely pivotal time. The old man expects Link to recognize the mysterious voice, which I've previously theorized belongs to Zelda herself because Zelda's lullaby is playing while she speaks. The same voice also describes Link as our light that must shine on Hyrule once again. Why would there be an emphasis on Link's life before his sleep, and the mysterious events that occurred back then, if it's just going to be learned about through cutscenes? The Zelda series is renowned for its storyline through gameplay rather than pre-rendered cutscenes, so I think it's more likely that we'll actually get to play during this time in Link's life at some point in the game. But logistically, how would this time jump work? Ocarina of Time had the Temple of Time, the Sacred Realm, and the Master Sword all to explain how Link can jump seven years forward and backward, but none of these elements are present to be responsible for this proposed time jump. However, there's a strong emphasis on the area where Link wakes up in, the Shrine of Resurrection. This shrine is an odd place, supposedly built by the Sheikah using their powerful technology, which fans have been calling Magi Tech. 
Since the Sheikah are hinted to be responsible in a part for the mining and use of timeshift stones before Skyward Sword, evidenced by their own symbol being present on the stones, it's not out of the question that this technology could help Link travel through time. In addition, the blue liquid and lights in the Shrine of Resurrection could suggest that it utilizes timeshift technology in some way. If all of this is true, then it could make for one of the most dynamic overworlds in gaming history. The vast but ruined Hyrule in the future, with its era of prosperity locked away in the past. Hyrule is ruined, in a state so dire that we've only seen its equal once, in the age after the Great Flood washed away the majority of the kingdom. But now Link has been awakened, the last hope of the land, and it's possible that the hero will travel backwards through time to prevent the terrible future into which he awoke. But, there is one thing we've been glossing over, so something huge happened to Link a hundred years ago that caused him to begin his sleep, a sleep that he wakes up from in the Shrine of Resurrection. Could Link have died a hundred years ago? Jump over to my channel to check out the counterpart video theorizing that Link died a hundred years ago and has been resurrected in Breath of the Wild. Thank you for watching this video. Sorry about the short break from YouTube, I kinda needed it after last month. And thank you again for 20,000 subscribers, it really means a lot to me. If you liked the video, leave a like, and if you're new, consider subscribing. I'll be producing more Breath of the Wild theories, analyses, over the next few months. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.